الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في القران الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد ذرنا لجهنم كثيرا من الجن والانس لهم قلوب لا يفقهون بها ولهم اعين لا يبصرون بها ولهم اذان لا يسمعون بها اولئك كالانعام بل هم اضل اولئك هم الغافلون سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created human beings with a purpose of life and that purpose is that we all worship him وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ that I have not created men and jinn except that they worship me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants that all of us we live a life in his remembrance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we live a life that is according to his commands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants that we live a life of a sound heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on the day of judgment the only thing that's going to help us going to benefit us is a sound heart yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun illa man ata Allah bi qalbin salim that on the day of judgment nothing will benefit either wealth nor children except who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart and a sound heart is a heart that's free of all spiritual diseases a sound heart is a heart that's is clean of all the spiritual blemishes when a heart becomes sound then it is the one that's filled with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a heart becomes sound it is filled with the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a heart becomes sound it is filled with connection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a heart becomes sound it is full of character is full of ikhlaq is full of love for Allah or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the believers when a heart becomes sound it becomes free of all the diseases 
jealousy, pride, arrogance, and majority of the times the heart becomes diseased because of two things. And those two things are number one, heedlessness, ghafla, and number two, jihala, ignorance. When people have these two things in them, then the heart becomes diseased. So, we are all travelers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all salik. And when a traveler is traveling, he should know a few things. He should know that he is traveling and his flight is at certain time when he is to go and catch his flight. Okay. So just imagine that there is a traveler whose flight is at say for example 9 in the morning and he sleeps and gets up at 8 o'clock. Of course he's going to miss his flight. This is heedlessness. That we all know that we are going, we are traveling a path. We all know we are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all know where is our destination. We all know that we are dying. We all know that there is there are only two places at the end, either paradise or hellfire, if you're sleeping. This is heedlessness, ghafla. You all are sleeping. You don't even realize what's the purpose of my life. This is number one cause of of the disease of the of, of, of the heart. And people get into ghafla, heedlessness, that starts creating all of those problems, it, that starts creating all of those bacteria that start making the heart diseased. The other thing is ignorance, jihala. So uh, there is a traveler, right? he goes on time, 9 o'clock is his flight, well, let's not take a flight, an example of flight, flight, they're all checkings. Let's say he's to take a train. Nine o'clock is his train. Okay. So this is one that goes towards towards uh, towards Dera. The other goes towards Jabal Ali. Right. Both fly, trains arrive at nine, o nine o'clock in the morning. And he used to go to Jabal Ali and he goes to a wrong platform and takes the Dera train and goes, starts moving towards Dera. This is Jihala. Or before he has to leave, he starts preparing for that journey. And when he starts preparing for that journey, say, He's going to another country, he's taking a train from say UK to France. He buys some traveler's checks, right? And when he goes and buys those traveler checks when he reaches reach in Paris, and he's going he goes and, and to, to cash those traveler checks, the person says the bank says, Oh, they're not real. They're fake. This is jihala. Total ignorance. What were you doing when were you buying your traveler's checks? This is what the travelers of to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also do. Total ignorance. People don't even know what are they doing. They 
don't even know where they are, where they are going. They have to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they go towards dunya. They reach, they catch the right flight, but rather than doing it in a sunnah way, they do it in a bid'ah way. Exactly opposite direction. Or they feel what they're doing is good, but in actual it's bad. So when you tell them, you know, you shouldn't be doing all of these calls and 40th day and this day and the, and, a, and, the, and the, the yearly anniversary of death and this and that. Oh, we are only reading Quran. What's wrong? So why are you doing it on a specific day? Who told you to do it in a, on a specific day? Can I call that person on this very specific day? Why do you want to call that person on that very specific day? Ignorance. People feel they are doing good. Actually, they are doing bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Tell them that shall I tell you of those who are who are doing the worst of actions from the akhsareen of amal the worst of actions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا that those whose efforts have been wasted in this life وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنَعًا and they were thinking that they are acquiring good by their works they were thinking that they were doing good things actually they were not getting anything these are, these are the worst of actions why is that ignorance? so when people have ghafla and people have jihala then they start are actually inviting those bacteria to their spiritual heart that will cause that heart to become diseased. So this is a nature of human being to become heedless if he does not remind himself or herself. That's the nature of a human being. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Qur'an. He sent the messengers. So they can remind people. That's the job of the of the of this Ummah as well. That they remind they should remind people. That's why we gather here together. In order that you may admonish people whose father had received no admonish, uh, admonition and who remain heedless. So when people are heedless, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messengers to remind them. Wake up. Wake up. Because heedless person is like a sleepwalker. He is walking, he thinks that he is awake, but he is not. He is sleeping. He is daydreaming. So, Prophets come to remind people. Quran was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind people the reality of things. You feel that this wall and this curtain and these lights and this clock and this closet and all of this, this these, these are the only real things. Quran says, no, this is not the reality. Reality is something else. When the did, when the because our, our eyes can't see that. They cannot. Because they don't have the that they don't have that strength of that vision. On the on the time of the death Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bakashafna anka ritaaka fabasaruka yawmul hadi yawma hadid that on that time, at that time, at the time of the death, the curtains will be raised. And your sight is so sharp, then people will start seeing the reality of things. 
the reality of things. People will start seeing angels. People will start seeing the reality. People will start seeing, you know, what this is all about. They will be able, their eyes will be able to pierce through this roof. They'll be able to see, you know, what's beyond this roof. People will start seeing, you know, the, 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 what's happening around them. The reality of things. It is not reality, it's all fake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, there's a whole chapter about what's a reality. al The reality. The real thing. mal What do you know what's a reality? What do you think? What do you think? What's reality? Three times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. Do you know what's reality? Do you know what's reality? Do you know what's reality? Just imagine the, the, the power behind that speech. So this is, this is, what you do is not reality. And people do not do, 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 do believe in reality. They are not able to realize what the reality. In the past, they have been destroyed. Jasmata says that right after. وَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُ بِرِيْهٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَادِيَا سَمُودَ and عَاد You know they're over destroyed by violent earthquakes and storms and winds سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةٍ ثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا فَتَرَ الْقَوْمَ فِيهَا صَرْعَا كَأَنَّهُمْ أَعْجَازُ نَخْرٍ خَابِيَا Allah You know when the world this 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 wind it 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 it, it, it blew against their will for seven nights eight days without stopping and in the end you could see these people laid laid down on the ground as they were uprooted trunks of hollow palm trees Allah these were the people and they denied the reality this is what happened do you see anything that's remaining of them? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember Fir'aun? وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمِنْ قَبْلِهِ وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَاتُ بِالْخَاطِئَةِ And there was a Fir'aun, a Pharaoh, and those who lived before him, and the cities were overthrown, all of them, when they indulged upon disobedience upon disobedience. This is what happened to people, they all denied the reality. فَعَسَوْا رَسُولَ رَبِّهِمْ فَأَخَذَهُمْ أَخْذَةَ الرَّابِيَةِ They all rebelled against their, the, 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 the Rasul, the messenger of their Lord. So he took them to the task with a punishment grasp that was very exceedingly severe. إِنَّا لَمَّا تَغَلْمَاءَ حَمَلَّاكُمْ فِي الْجَارِيَةِ Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. That what happened with them when a flood came? And Allah SWT says, we, we, we made all of that as a lasting reminder for you so that you understand what did what happened when they denied the reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a day is going to come. The reality. This is reality. This dunya is not reality. Reality is that that day which is coming. وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَ دَكَّةً وَاحِدًا And the earth and the mountain shall be lifted up and crushed with a single stroke. فَيَوْمَ إِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِيَةً وَانْشَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ فَهِيَ يَوْمَ إِذٍ وَاهِيَةً the sky will will destroy. Well, Malaku ala arja iha wa yahmilu arsha rabbika fawqahum yawma in samania. And the angels will come, eight of them lifting the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then on that day, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It's up to you. you if you realize the reality, the haqiqah, if you're not heedless, or if you are heedless, depends that what will be your final abode, 
whoever whoever realized the reality and they were not heedless then people will be given their books in their right hands and they will be so happy they will shout ah see read my book I wasn't heedless I realized the reality inni ghanantu anni mulaqadi sabiya I knew I wasn't he I wasn't heedless I knew that that I would have to face my account and then fa huwa fi aishati radiya they will find themselves in a happy state fi jannatin aliya in lofty paradises and then if people were heedless وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِي And people who will be given their books in their left hands who were heedless they will say I wish I wish that I had never been shown my book وَلَمْ أَدْرِي مَا حِسَابِيَا I don't even know what is all of this account يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَادِيَا I wish that that death that I had would have been the end of my life. مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَا My wealth didn't help me. خَلَقْ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَا All these things that I was after, my wealth, my position, didn't help me today. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the angels that, you know, grasp him. خُذُوهُ وَغُلُّوهُ ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوهُ Grasp him, enter into, into the hellfire. ثُمَّ فِي سِلْسِلَةٍ ذَرُوهَا سَبْعُونَ ذِرَا أَنفَسْلُكُ And throw him, and thrust him into a chain, the length of which is seventy cubits. Why? He was heedless. إِنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ He didn't realize what was his purpose of life. He didn't even realize that he is here for Allah. He is here to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders. And the wealth that was given to him, he was just like getting arrogant. He wasn't sharing it. وَلَا يَحُدُّ عَلَىٰ تَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ فَلَيْسَ لَهُ الْيَوْمَ هَا هُنَا حَمِينَ No friend is going to come and help him this time. That's all what he was doing. Friends, parties, Wasting time. No friend is coming today. This is Hakika. This is the reality of things. So we have to get out of out of our state of heedlessness and understand the reality of things. This is reality, right? So this dunya that we have that we can see is just fake. Reality is what's been given to us by our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we all have to have belief in. That's reality. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that this heedlessness, this ghafla is so bad that if you are in state of ghafla then you are worse than animals. And not only animals but you are worse than animals. Why? Because animals do what they have been commanded to do. That's their limit. They cannot think beyond that. They do whatever they are supposed to do. They eat, they drink, they reproduce. That's all what they do. This is, this is why they have been created. Once they get sacrificed and you eat them or ride them and, and use them and that's all what they do. If the lion attacks another, another, another animal, that's what it's supposed to do. If the snake bites somebody, that's what he's supposed to do. But you have been, you are, you were supposed to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what's, what's your purpose. And if you become like animals and you start doing the same thing that the animals do, then you are worse than animals. Because that was not what you were supposed to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَلَقَدْ رَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ 
that that there are many jinns and men we have made just for hellfire. Why? Because they have love qulub la yafqahuna biha. They have hearts, but they do not understand with it. Wallahum ayunu la yubsaruna biha. They have eyes, but they don't see. They're sleepwalking. They're heedless. Wallahum adanu la yusma'una biha. They have ears, but they do not listen. And that doesn't mean that you listen. You listen, but when you act, don't act as, as if you're not listening. What's the point that you are listening, you know you are, yeah, and, and then you go back home and keep doing the same things that you were doing before. It's as if you are not listening. لَهُمْ آذَانُ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ They are like animals. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No. بَلْهُمْ أَضَلْ They are even worse than animals. Why? أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ Because they are heedless. They are heedless of what is told to them. They are heedless of what they see. They are heedless of what they think about. So we need to understand that. To talk, tell people, oh no, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of us. He does, inshallah. But this is not the sunnah. If he does, that will be out of his infinite mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي أَلَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Tell to the people that, 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 oh my people, who have wronged themselves, don't lose hope in Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ He is merciful, He is forgiving. But then the next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, keep a balance. Don't be stupid. Don't just stop here. Read the whole Quran. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ But turn to your Lord. وَأَسْلِمُوا And be submissive. Have full submission. وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ To have full submission to Him. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيكُمُ الْأَذَابِ Next ayah. Before that, you are hit with punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ And then you will not be helped. Why don't we have a balance? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he is a fool, stupid, that who just follows his desires and then have all hopes in Allah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that's not the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can do whatever he wants. He's Allah, He's the Lord of, of the words. But we have to do our, our do what we are supposed to do. We shouldn't be heedless. We cannot be heedless. There was a a governor of a town and he had a minister. And the minister invited the governor to his house. And he accepted. And when the governor came to his house, he had, a son, he had his son playing, the minister's son playing in, 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 in the garden of the house. And he came and he, 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 he said, you know, how are you? Come here. And Ratan, Accepting what he was saying, the governor, he said something very bad. The minister he started shaking, you know, he's going to fire me from my job. The governor said, no, don't worry, don't worry. You know, I can see that there is, there, he, he's a very bright child. He's a very bright child. He said, you know, he went back and he said, I grabbed him scholarship 
that he's, he should he should go to the best of the schools. So our Mashaikh say that what Garner did here was an exception. I mean, just imagine all the kids that start coming and start saying bad things. The Garner used he's going to give scholarships to everybody. No, it is his his choice. Ideally, he was going to call the minister and say, "You didn't even teach your kids how to how to behave with with me. You know, you're fired from your job." So nobody will say that. Nobody is going to call their their son and and tell all the ministers they're going to say, "You know, go and and say something bad to the to the governor." No. So we need to understand that we cannot be heedless. We cannot be heedless. And ignorance also that's something that we need to get rid of. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, that that we need to gain knowledge. Prophet said, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. Gaining of the knowledge is mandatory, is forth upon every believer. There is no excuse that we don't know. We need to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from me. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets pleased with, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets displeased with, we need to know. We can't take an opposite train. We are all going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't take a train that's going in the other direction. We need to take a train to the paradise. We cannot afford to take a train to, to the hellfire. We need to know that, you know, it's it, the things that we are doing are fake or real. If they are getting they are attracting the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they are attracting His wrath. Outwardly they may look good, but they are fake traveler's checks. You are not going to cash them. This is something that we need to understand. And people have very different levels of ignorance. Some people, out of ignorance, they don't know, they reject the hereafter, sometimes. Not possibly verbally, sometimes people do even verbally as well. Or at least through actions. At least through actions. And the rejection by actions is that if people really understand that what this particular thing is leading me to, then they would avoid that. They will. They should avoid that. They don't do that. People are lying and they continue to lie. People are watching stupid stuff and they continue to watch stupid stuff. People backbite and they continue to backbite. People don't pray and they continue not praying. What is that? If you really think about it, it's rejection of, of the hereafter through actions. Because if he had known, if he had this knowledge, true knowledge, that we are all going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, then we would have done actions that would have led us to the paradise and not to the hell. Zone. So we should try to treat us, we should visualize that what's happening with the people in paradise and hellfire. And then some people have doubts about the hereafter. And then they say, you know, what's the point of sacrificing this dunya or something which is real, which is certain, over a hellfire, over, a, over, over a, a, the next world which is uncertain. Okay. It's uncertain. We haven't seen that. But we all do that for things that are uncertain. If people get sick, then they take medicines. They take medicines. I mean, the, the, the health is uncertain. If you have a headache and you take your paracetamol, do you, are you 100% sure you're going to get, you're going to get the, the, the headache removed? No. Still you take it. Right? We know that we are doing businesses. If you people travel for business, there is, there, is a, there is a doubt. You may lose, you may win. But people still do it. 
Right? If people, say for example, are very thirsty, it's so hot out there, they're very, very thirsty, and you know, you, somebody brings you a glass of water, and say, you know, possibly a snake has put his, his mouth in his water. It's only a dime. It's no certainty, but people take it, no? Even though they are dying with thirst. I don't want to take it. There's a possibility, a doubt. Some said that, you know, I'm not certain, but maybe there was a snake walking around, crawling around, you know, it might have come and, and, and might have put his head in this water. People will not take it. The water is certain. The snake is a doubt. So why can't we, I mean, first of all, I'm just trying to un relate it. But if people have this doubt, if they have shukuk, there are people who have shukuk. If people come and they say they have shukuk, they have doubts. The shaitan whispers, they come all the time. Even if, for example, you take Mr. Shaitan for some time, and he, you take his whispers for, for a moment, still do it. Because we always do it. Right? Somebody, uh, uh, somebody came, a non-believer came to say, Ali radiallahu an, an atheist. He said, you know, I don't believe what you are doing is right. Say, Ali radiallahu an, he said, you know, if you are right that there is nothing in the hereafter, then at least I'm living a very moral life, a full life full of character, because all what she's teaching is morality. But if I am right and you are wrong, you are going into the hellfire. Right? So it's still all good. Some people think, you know, this is cash, hereafter is a loan. You know, the cash is better than loan. It's maybe that's a valid argument, but that can only be good if the cash and loan are equal. And if you have 100 dirhams in your bag, and you have like 100 billion as a loan, what would you prefer? 100 billion. And there's no comparison for what you get in this dunya as versus what you get in the hereafter. So it's better that you leave this cash in return for something that's waiting for us. And then some people say, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are all experiences, this is what people do. Allah, if Allah ta'ala has given me in this dunya, He will also give me in that dunya. Well, you know, this is a sign of His love that, you know, don't you see, I'm so wealthy, I have this car and that and this much in my bank account. It's not a sign of love. It's not a sign of love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned this, this when uh, a waqi had an incident in Surah al kahf he says that this this person who had this garden, وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرٌ بَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثِرُ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَعَزُّ نَفَرًا He said, I have more wealth than you, I'm better than you in power. وَدَّخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ he entered his garden, he was oppressing himself, he was an oppressor on his own self. He said, قَالَ مَا أَظُنُّ That I don't think that salt is going to ever destroy. وَمَا أَظُنُّ سَاعَةَ قَائِمَةً وَلَا إِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبَ He said that I, I have a... I don't think that the Day of Judgment is going to come, and even if it comes, then... And, and even if I'm, I'm brought before my Lord, before my Rav, I'm sure that something even better than is going to come to me on the Day of Judgment. <laughs> so, but that's not, the, that's not the truth, right? Sometimes, you know, it is a father and the children, you always, father always cares for his children. He knows that, for example, if I give him thousand dirhams, either he's going to lose it, or maybe some arrogance is going to come in his heart, so better to, to, to treat him. I'll, I'll say, you know, I'm not going to give you thousand dirhams, only take ten or fifteen or twenty. Because I care for him. And for somebody that I don't care, say, you know, I don't care, I, I can give him whatever. So sometimes it's not only always care when you give somebody things. 
Prophet ﷺ said that if this dunya had even the value of a mosquito's wing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would not have given a sip of water to the non-believers. People who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This world has nothing, no value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. So there's no, this not a sign that if people have all this dunya, that they, 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 are, they, are, they are good people. Or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them in the hereafter as well. This is ignorance. And then I said, this is also ignorance. People think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all merciful. And you know, it's going to give Jannah to everybody. Right. Yes, He is merciful, but He has given us a lot of things. Isn't it this mercy that He has given us opportunity to good, do good deeds? We could have been lying on a bed and paralyzed. Audhu billah la qadar Allah. And then, you know, we would not have any opportunity to do some anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us energy, we can move our hands, our feet, our limbs, our eyes, our tongue, our nose, our, we can go wherever we can. This is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us opportunities. Choose what you want to do. This is mercy. Isn't it mercy that you do one good deed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you 10 to 700 times the reward? This is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do a good deed. He is merciful, but this is what the very mercy is. Isn't it enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this beautiful month of Ramadan every single year? Inshallah we'll talk about Ramadan, but Ramadan is a beautiful month. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to grant us His infinite mercy. When people don't take care of that month of Ramadan, you know, who's, who, 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 is, who is responsible? It's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to go on Hajj once in a lifetime. Isn't that mercy? You go to Hajj, right, and if you don't do certain things, you come back as if you are a newborn baby. Isn't that mercy? This is mercy. And then you don't want to do any of those things and still, you know, want to, to gain that, that, that pure place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's ignorance. So when people have this heedlessness, they know but are heedless or they don't know the reality of things then people start having all of these diseases of the heart then they start getting those people that are diseased so we need to make sure that we are out of this state we need to make sure that we we go into the gatherings of zikr of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can be reminded of our reality, of the purpose of our life. And we need to make sure that we we make every effort that we gain knowledge so that shaitan is not able or our nafs is not able to fool us. All of these are, are, are whispers. And and you can ask anybody, why don't you pray? Why don't you do this? Why do you do this? Why do you do, do this? We all have excuses to do that. Very few people say that you know I know it's bad but you know it's my fault very few people say that and this is a better step than saying you know than finding excuses it's always better to say if you're not doing certain things you know I know I'm bad I know I'm wrong right and inshallah I'll try to be better that's a better state than finding excuses for what you do wrong so we all need to work on it. We all need to make an effort. Because the reality, as I said in the beginning, is something very different from what we, from what we see. The reality will be shown to us very soon. It is given to us, and we have been told to believe in all of that. And we have to believe in that before it's too late. We all have to believe in that. We need to make sure that, that, that we believe in every single thing that Thing that's given to us by Allah and His Messenger before it's too late we cannot afford to be heedless we cannot afford to be to be ignorant there's no excuse absolutely no excuse okay. Allah says Ya Ayyuhannas Inna Allah 
that O oh people the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا that let not this life deceive you no that let not this life deceive you وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ and, and, and please know that not that shaitan deceive you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Be there. Wake up. Don't, 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 don't be in a state of sleepwalking, sleepwalking anymore. Get up. You need to realize. So this is something that we all need to start working. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we be able to get out of the state of ghafla. That we be able to get out of the state of ignorance. So that we can realize the true purpose of our life. And so that we can realize that we are, we are all going and we need to work on it. We need to work on it. There is no excuse my friends. There is no excuse. Wa akhiru ta'wana. الحمد لله رب العالمين